Welcome to another episode of Sanford Says. This is Lisa Holder, Communications Officer for the City of Sanford. I am joined today by Ginger Hoke. Ginger Hoke is a landscape architect and urban planner with Niels Schaefer, a local engineering and planning firm in downtown Sanford. And Ginger is a longtime resident of, of Sanford. Ginger is also the project manager for a recently funded grant through the Department of Economic Opportunity with the state of Florida. Ginger, welcome. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for having me here. So Ginger's going to share with us information about Get in the Sanford Mode. Ginger, could you share with us and the community exactly what is Get in the Sanford Mode? Okay, yeah, thanks, Lisa. We've had a lot of fun with this project. Get in the Sanford mode is a play on words to reflect all the different modes of transportation that we are looking at when we're doing this study for the city of Sanford. So we have planes, trains, buses, the trolley. We have golf carts. We have a golf cart taxi now. We have boats. We have canoes and kayaks. We have bikes. So what we do is we wanted to just talk about getting in the Sanford mode because when people think of Sanford they think of maybe drinking beer or the river walk and all the historic neighborhoods so we just want to look at it as transportation and that's what we're doing today. And could you share how this project is funded and a little bit about the grant how much the grant is and sure the Department of Economic Opportunity provided a no match grant to us for eighty forty eight thousand five hundred and the reason that we got a little bit more than most cities or other entities was because we included Seminole County, Volusia County, and the city of Deltona, which are our partners and communities along Lake Monroe. Great. And are there project goals? I'm sure there are. Yes, there are. We want to identify transportation gaps and look for opportunities. So when I say that, we're looking at things that are more than just the infrastructure. We're looking at scheduling and also even promotional tourism, social media type of goal, you know, um, opportunities. And then we're going to develop concepts, and we're in the middle of this project right now. We're developing concepts that improve mode interconnectivity. And then we promote the region, of course, who doesn't want to promote Sanford. Um, And then we want to provide balanced solutions because we want growth here, but we also want to maintain our historic charm and our small town feel. So it seems like this is a timely project. We have a lot going on in Sanford with Heritage Park, the Mayfair Hotel renovation, the new shops and restaurants, and all of our events that expand every year and bring more people to our city. How will this study help us plan for the city's continued growth and popularity? Well, I think it's an important study, and I'd like to expand on it more sometime. Like This is like a two-year study that we're shoving into about six months, but we want to look mostly at how people get to Sanford and then how they get around Sanford. And then we're going to be creating visions, and we've started some of these, to address transportation and connectivity, as well as looking at everything from a tourist uh, standpoint. So when you look at the Riverwalk um, growing, we have, we have Riverwalk Phase 3 going in. It's going to connect to the Coast to Coast Trail which is a 250-mile multi-use trail that's going across the state of Florida and is connecting to the River to Sea Loop Trail. So you're going to have a total of 600 miles of multi-use paved trail connecting to Sanford, and then our river walk is going to connect to that. So Sanford really needs to be a destination city because we already are a destination city. We just want to have you know, more fun ways to get here and make sure we have all these connections set in place. Um, We are also identifying any kind of transportation needs that will communicate, you know, what the growth should be. So we want to come up with some kind of a blueprint or a master plan that shows what we should be looking at. Okay. And so with the planned developments, do you think or what do you think will impact our, our downtown transportation? Well, we do have a lot going on, like you were saying. We have Heritage Park that's going to be coming in. We have a lot of new shops and restaurants. The Mayfair Inn Hotel is doing the renovation, and they expect a lot of people to come in for that. Willow Tree is expanding with their really coolly named Holler Block. And we have, as I said, the Coast to Coast Trail. We have Riverwalk Phase 3. And then we also have Seminole County's Lake Monroe Loop Trail that's going to be going around Lake Monroe. So there's a lot of different things encompassing all together. So does your study look at new transportation trends and and like like the Sanford free trolley and our golf cart? Yes. Yeah. I think that is that's what makes this study 
more important to do right now is that really if you look at how things have progressed in five years, uh, you have Sunrail, uh, we have our trolley, like you said, now we have golf carts as a mode of transportation, we have the Lime golf cart taxi, and then even you look at how shopping has changed. People don't shop, um, they don't go shopping as much anymore, they have Amazon Deliver. So we need to be able to plan for Amazon deliveries and other deliveries. And now it, it, parking is hard to, to find downtown, so that's a good problem to have, but we want to make sure that we don't deter visitors with parking problems too much. And then technology has changed, uh, Uber and Lyft. Uh, a lot of people use Uber and Lyft, so we need to also address all these new trends and put them all together in a master plan. I realize that you're not done with the study, but have, do you have any initial findings, Ginger? Yes, Lisa. Um, I mean, some of them I think everybody in the city of Sanford already knows somewhat. So the riverfront is underutilized, and it's still too separate from the downtown. People can visit downtown and not even know that there is a riverfront. Um, and we need a drop-off area for the people in the downtown area so that if you have um, someone with small children, you can drop them off, or your grandmother, or things like that. You can drop people off downtown uh, and keep driving to find a parking spot. We need more downtown parking solutions, preferably a, a multi-pronged approach. And then sometimes the road closures impact bus, you know, for the events, impact the bus and trolley service. And, and I even looked at it recently as it's going to Im impact emergency access to Marina Isle. So we have to look at everything to make sure we balance it out. And then we want to make sure that the travelers that are coming here have a good experience and want to come back. So, and as I said, at the same time, we want to make sure we keep our small town charm and not make residents unhappy with any kind of cumbersome tourism um, projects or overflow. And then we also need to under, understand what the costs of these projects are so we can kind of do a master plan and then divide it up into bite-sized projects, find out what they cost or any grants available, and then what is the maintenance so that we look at everything long term. And what concepts are you developing? Well, some of the top, the top five fun concepts uh, would be the water taxi, connecting 10 existing piers and boat ramps with some kind of a water taxi system all along Lake Monroe. That's why we partnered with uh, the city of Deltona, Volusia County, and Seminole County. So we want to, what we can envision at this point is you could have a way to put your bike on this little boat. Um, you can also maybe tow your kayak and your canoe and go to other areas of the lake and go exploring or birding. And then um, the second the second concept is to do some kind of zoo, Airbnb, tree houses or cabins. So we want to find ways to have things be a little bit sustainable so maybe they can charge for these Airbnb and make a little bit of money and improve the zoo. And um, that will also capture some of the coast-to-coast -coast trail people that are going to be coming in, you know, as soon as that complete that trail connection is complete. And it gives us a way to do ecotourism. Um, and, and encourages overnight stays, which is always good. Um, and then also maybe some kind of a promenade connecting First Street and Riverfront. That would be really nice. I mean, I think we can all visualize when you say promenade that it would be a, a nice treed sidewalk, like wide sidewalk plaza that goes directly from First Street to the Riverfront. And then the, the fourth idea we've got is to make things a little bit easier for people to navigate and maybe more fun. Um, street printing and painting things to be able to find out, like, Public parking, people don't always know where the public parking is. If you painted the entrances and labeled everything a little bit and put some bikeways in and painted them, you could have a little bit more uh, easy navigation for people that aren't familiar with the area. And you can even show things like traffic calming um, and playing with the alleys. I, I told Janine Taylor that I've used her as a verb and that we could Janine Taylor the city and have her be part of incorporating art into some of these ideas. And for those listeners who don't know who Janine Taylor is, she's a local artist and has a gallery downtown Sanford. Yes, thanks. And then pop-up alleys. Uh, you know, I know I tried to do this like 25 years ago, was to try to have the alleys be multi-use and shared with, say, trails and service. So if you look at trying some of these things on, you could have events in alleys and have them be multi-use and try some of these ideas out to see how they work. And then coming up with some kind of a get in the Sanford mode app would be fun to do. 
to be able to get everything to work together in an app form because we all just use our phones. Yeah, that sounds like some really un- wonderful things to do and great plans that you have. Next thing is, though, how can you implement all of these plans and these ideas? Well, it's frustrating because planning takes a long time. Um, I worked on the Riverwalk concept plans in 1995. So some of these things take longer. Hopefully things have sped up now and it won't take as long. But we do need to dive deeper and do a little bit more of a detailed master plan that really understands all of these layers, how they work together, what the stakeholders all need, and do a little bit of a balance so that everybody's happy. Um, And then, like I say, the field test concepts, if we can do that with the pop-up alleys or street printing with maybe chalk paint, so it's temporary. And then field testing the ideas, maybe we can find somebody to do like a water taxi system once a month, and then it goes to once a week, and then it goes to every day. So (laughs) it would be fun. And then seeking private business partnerships um, and funding. I know that there's people that are interested in doing a lot of transportation-related tourism, so working with them to go a little bit further with these ideas and then researching grant opportunities and then working with everybody in the community to talk it up and show interest. Word of mouth, talk it up. Well, that's great. Thank you, Ginger. How can people reach you with their ideas? Well, we have one public meeting planned at the end of April or early May. We're still coming up with that date. So it'll be announced, I'm sure, through the city of Sanford. Or you can send me an email at ginger.hoke, H-O-K-E, at Neil Schaefer, N-E-E-L, dash Schaefer, S-C-H-A-F-F-E-R dot com. Well, there you have it. Get in the Sanford mode. If you've not heard about it, you've heard about it now. We want to thank Ginger Hope for being our guest, sharing the most important information about what this whole project is. And again, if you need to or would like to share your ideas with Ginger, please send Ginger an email at ginger.hoke, H-O-K-E, at Neil, N as in Nancy, E-E-L, hyphen, S-C-H-A-F, as in Frank, F-E-R, dot com. They will have a public meeting sometime at the in the end of April or early May. Stay tuned to the City of Sanford. We'll share that information with you on social media and through our website. Thank you again, Ginger, for being our guest at the City of Sanford. Sanford says we appreciate you being on. Any last words? No, thank you, Lisa. I'm really excited for Sanford, and I hope that we can make this all come together. Thank you. And you can find this podcast on our City of Sanford website, Spotify, SoundCloud, social media, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and the city website, SanfordFL.gov, and the Spreaker platform. Thank you again for listening to Sanford Says. This is Lisa Holder. Until next time, see you then. 